since you've thought about TypeScript linting rules a lot, uh, you've probably also thought about TypeScript best practices a lot. So uh, what are some of your go-to TypeScript best practices tips? Love it. Um, nothing I will say and nothing anyone ever says in response to that question should be taken as 100% always the right thing. There are always edge cases and little considerations. But, you know, infer types over declared <laughs> types. Uh, I think if you're writing out complex types in your type annotations and types, you would have inferred them anyway. Most, but not all, of the time, that's a waste of time. Uh, I've seen people do things like const name colon string equals quote some name. You're not telling TypeScript anything it didn't already know. It, it knows the name is a string. And in fact, it it's losing information if you say it's the general primitive string and not the literal whatever the name is. So especially when you get to the types where TypeScript would have inferred something smarter than you, go for the inferred type. Save, your, save yourself the, the, the pain of writing things out. Yeah, I definitely agree with that one. Does that uh, opinion stretch to return types? Uh, sometimes, much of the time. I've seen a lot of functions that have the explicit return type string or void, and then it's the same thing, uh, especially with string where maybe TypeScript wouldn't refer to literal. I will say though, sometimes TypeScript's inference is not what you want. I'm not saying it's incorrect, just there are debatable cases. Did you want to return a union of 15 different objects or was it a specific interface or type or is it a discriminated type union, which is a whole other thing. So yeah, if, if TypeScript inference is not what you wanted, then yeah, definitely be explicit and tell it no, I'm right, you're wrong. But for the most part, that's that's not the common case. Yeah, the the return types get me a lot. We have them sort of enforced in our repo, and then I get to a React component that returns a JSX element, and that is not right. And it's just oh. like, I'm battling it, <laughs> especially with forwarded ref components. Not, not a fun time. <laughs> that's one of the cases where TypeScript gets harder to use when you have like generic components and props and as and forward ref and all that. It's, it's hard. But it's conceptually difficult. Like humans have a hard time describing that, let alone machines. Yeah, it's the only. It's one of the only times I've encountered the possibly infinite type error. Uh, not a fun <laughs> one to come across. And a lot of the design system code that I've written over the years has has had to cast refs to as any, just because like it's not going to work if you're making a polymorphic component. That's one of those little achievement unlocked yeah. things, right? Like you don't expect to get it. You, you should. Someone should write a VS Code extension that puts up like the Xbox 360 style bloop at the bottom whenever you do something cool. That's amazing. Um, so let's extend the, the question to the next thing. Uh, so you have opinions about async code too. Uh, what are those? Oh boy. In general, async code can be easy to mess up. So try to find a pattern that's lintable. For example, just enable the type with BS lint recommended or if you can, even the strict configs, they will catch a lot of issues for you. I think if you're going to make a promise, make it awaitable uh, and make it something that can be handled in a, in a way that, that works well. Uh, what I mean by that is if you have a lot of async functions um, and you don't want to have to constantly wrap them with try catch and then a logger call if they fail, consider writing a shared utility helper that can take in an async call and turn it into a dot catch logger dot complain if it, if it rejects. Uh, but Honestly, as long as you're doing things in a way that type could be a slint rules can assure you is, is safe, you're, you're in a good starting place. How would you write code that isn't able to be caught by those rules? Let's take the example of an on click. Let's say you're writing some UI framework code and you have a button, standard button class, and it's on click can be just any function. Uh, suppose you want to pass async logic, like on click, the button starts a spinny, sends a network request, and then the network request finishes, it does something else. So you pass an async function to this on click. If you declare the functions on click or whatever equivalent as returning just void, and then that promise rejects, you likely had nothing in your code to handle the rejection. So if something can receive an async call or an async function, then I recommend marking it as potentially returning void or promise void, let's say. So that way the function call in the buttons on click handler can be wrapped with like a try catch or something. Or if you don't really want to do that, have some like shared handler, like takes in function that returns void or promise void that can console.warn and call your whatever logger on the case of rejection. I, I apologize. I don't know that I have a very good succinct answer to that question because most of it boils down to don't do things that the linter can't <laughs> cache for you because that that's really the, the best way I think to, you know, to start these things. But everything else kind of ends up being app or framework specific. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. 